but it's Attorney General William Barr who will have the final essentially is made public. Yeah, legal analysts want to explain the origin of the special case. The Democrats in the House of Re Representatives, as we just heard, are investigation started, but they can't say they're complete or until rather Attorney General William Barr lets them see it. And he will give the full report over to them, not really giving much of a commentary uh, since his confirmation hearings just back in January. Well, all I can say right now is my goal and intent is to get as much information as I can, Thank consistent you. with the regulations. Those comments from Attorney General William Barr's confirmation hearing in January still have House Democrats like Judiciary That's Committee fine. Chairman Gerald That's Nadler fine. Barr may withhold evidence of President Trump's own yes. wrongdoing. We, we do want the underlying, and Congress is entitled to know because it's our, it's our job to hold any president accountable. Ever since President Ulysses country's first special prosecutor in 1875, the process has been used to keep administrations honest. But it wasn't until after the Watergate investigation, a century later, that special prosecutors were truly independent from the administrations that appointed them, says constitutional law professor and Special counsel, who was then known as an independent counsel, required to submit a report to Congress, and there was nothing the Attorney General... But after independent counsel Ken Starr published the case, Congress let the independent counsel statute lapse and the justice of prosecutors under the attorney general's authority. But Cohen, author of prosecuting the president, how special counsels hold presidents accountable and protect the rule of law, says that the final in public. But at the end of the day, there's really nothing that a special prosecutor to save the American people from uh, themselves. It's who will decide whether the president is above the law. Now, in other words, if Congress ends up fighting with his own testimony to Congress, well, then this could very much action. And of course, that does mean ultimately it won't be any prosecution or impeachment people in their collective at an election on making the final decision. Steve? Thank you, Mike. And the sun came out after the big snowstorm last night. Overnight. Yeah, that's right. The snow went away early, got mm -hmm. warm out. But we shouldn't get too used to that, Nick. It's going to get real cold real soon. Yeah, we got another cold blast coming in for the week. So if you didn't clean up too much of the snow today, it's whatever's hard tonight and stay that way. Carmel 8, 7 at Bayside, 6 at Shoreham at about 5. Five in Sussex, Cedar Grove nine, same at Green Pond, Hayworth eight point eight, Highland Lakes eight point two, Somerset at seven point eight, and Connecticut actually had some pretty big numbers too. Monroe at twelve, eleven and a half, Newtown, New Canaan at ten or just over. Dan eight coming in from Stanford and Greenwich now again are in the high thirties, but again the trend's going to be cold. Uh, it's already in the lower 30s, even into the 20s there at Monticello. Wind out of the northwest, a little busy, 10 to 20, gusting to 26. So it's a wind chill in the air. And look at what's happening as temps up north are already in the teens now. Buffalo to Rochester again coming down with that strong northwesterly airflow uh, in the forecast. Futurecast doesn't show much happening in the next couple of days. Uh, just much again, high, uh, lows tomorrow morning in the teens north and west and about 22 in the city. Darren All right. Thank, thank you, Nick. Well, New York City schools predictably will be open tomorrow following today's snow day. The mayor catching some criticism for closing schools, especially after the storm turned out to be less than expected. The mayor tweeting, quote, we put safety first when we make a call on closing school. So it is off the hills and back to school.